reception areas or pool areas, right? First name, last name, and your position in the company. You can start for me now. My name is Sabine. Uh -huh. My name is PR. Mm -hmm. uh, marketing manager. Marketing manager. So mostly outside and office, right? Office. Office. Sir? So public areas, right? My name is Security public area. And my name is Setula. I'm the food service. F and B. Yeah. Okay. My name is Alvin. I'm a working housekeeping. Housekeeping. Public area also, yeah. right? Yeah. Suggesting plans? Chef. Chef. So burn. Thirty degree burn. Ability to say. Food safety. Food safety. Food safety. Hats up. Hats up. You you're maintaining your hats up. Okay. Good. Sanitary Stand Kikwa Concierge. Concierge, yeah, I saw the standing. Yeah. Security. How about security? Clearly, my life and safety. Life and safety. Okay. All right, guys. So, again, my name is Jomar. Huh? If you have any question regarding if you have any question regarding the lecture, feel free to ask. I'm not going to use the slides because if I use the slides, you will read my slides, okay? Now, if you hear this word, what's the first thing that usually comes into your mind? What else? Medical assistance. CPR, medical assistance. What else? So CPR, medical assistant. What else? If you hear the word first, hmm? very good. Emergency. If there's a first aid, there's an emergency, right? What else? What else, guys? Type of dressing. Bandage, right? Bandage. Bandage, first aid kit. What else? If you hear the word first aid. One more, one more, one more answer, guys. If you hear the word... The word first aid, what you see be the first thing that you see comes into your mind. CPR, medical assistant, emergency, bandages, what else? Health and safety. If you hear this one, what do you think? Okay, all of your answers are correct. If we have first aid, we have emergencies and injuries, correct? But not all the time, if you hear the word first aid, we have to deal with injuries. Okay? Are you taking vitamins? Who takes vitamins? Raise your hand. Why do you take vitamins, sir? Because of the reason. Why? What's the reason? Uh, I think I have low vitamin B12. Vitamin B12. So if you take vitamin B12, the deficiency will be over, right? So it's no prevention. You're taking care of yourself. You're concerned about your health. That's why you take vitamins, right? You have kids. You have family. You take care of your families and kids. Why do you take care of them? Because they, you want them to be healthy. Sometimes you go to the gym. Why do you go to the gym? Yeah. You care about yourself. So we call that wellness. First aid is a wellness. Not all the time that you're going to deal with injuries and 
emergencies. Who wants emergencies? Raise your hand. I'll give you right now. Who wants injuries? Raise your hand. We will give it to you right away. We don't want emergencies. We don't want injuries. Right? But the reason why you are here is because these emergencies and injuries are very unpredictable. We will never know when they will come. Okay? That's the reason why you are here. You will deal with these things, but not all the time. Okay? But before you deal with these things, you need this. Preparation. Why do you need to be prepared? To be at accordingly. Uh, accordingly, to less the panic mode. Okay. Can you predict emergencies? Can you predict emergencies? Can you predict injuries? Right? And can you predict who will be the next victim? No. For example, later you're having a dinner with your family and you suffer from choke. And you don't know what to do, what will happen to you. You're going to die 100%. What if you live alone and you suffer from choke? Do you know what to do? You're going to die. And that's what that's why you are here. Preparation. Aside from preparation, you need what's that? You need knowledge, right? And practice. Skills is the practice. You're prepared, but you don't have the knowledge and you don't have the skills. It's useless. Okay? So preparation, knowledge, skills, and Understanding Understand. Are we good? Mm -hmm. So this is the this is the basic things. Not only in first aid, but in all the aspects as you're working in what you are working right now in your position, you need these things. Are we good? Yes. Okay, now I have one simple question. Why do we need to apply first aid? For example, if you have kids, raise your hands if you have kids. Okay, sometimes your kids is suffering from fever, or one of your family members is suffering from fever, or one of your colleagues is suffering from fever. You're not sending them immediately to the doctor, right? You give what? You give first aid. Okay, why do you give first aid? What's your goal? Very good. I'm just depending on your answer, guys. So, the aims of first aid is number one, what's that? To reduce the impact. So, prevent the injury from getting worse. worse. Right? Prevent the injury from from getting worse. Right? If you prevent the injury from getting worse, you have the knowledge, skills, you know a lot of things, what will be the recovery? Is it good or bad? Of course, good. You will promote a good you will promote a good recovery. This is your goal, right? That's why you're here. If you prevent the injury from getting worse, you promote a good recovery. This is what we call Preservation of life. You're preserving life. You're taking care of your life. Okay?
preserve life. Agree. All right. Preserve life. Whose life are you going to preserve in case of emergency or the rescue? Victim. Do we have a lifeguard here? Do we have a swimming pool here? Yes. How deep is the pool? Five point five. So let's say you don't know how to swim security, and this guy is drowning. Are you going to enter the water just to save this guy? No. Yes or no? Yes or no? No. So whose life we prioritize? Your life. Clear? Not all the time. You have to rescue. If you think that your safety will be compromised, do not rescue. Because if I'm drowning and you rescue me, sir, and you don't have the rescue skill, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the skills, and you're not prepared, what will happen to you? I will grab you down and both of us will die. That's what we call preservation of life. Okay? Clear? Clear? Yes. All right. Now, for example, we have one victim. The nurse, you call the nurse, or the nurse is not around, and there's one victim. What are the two important things that you need to check to a victim? The two important things. You took first aid before, right? You took first aid before, guys? Which center? Inner tech? Inner tech also need inner tech? I'm not, I'm not the professor, I'm huh? sure I'm not. All right. What are the two things that you need to check to a victim? Responding. Responding. Other term for responding. Other term for an other term for a lie. Conscious. Kind of. Very good. If the victim is conscious. Conscious. If you have a victim conscious, the other one is guys. Everything will start from here. If you don't know how to identify what is unconscious and unconscious, or what is conscious and unconscious, <coughs> you cannot apply your first aid. All right. Now, listen very carefully. These are the two types of victim. This is your this is your baseline. Everything will start from here. When can you say that the victim is conscious? You have one victim here. When can you say that the victim is conscious? Huh? If he is not responding on not responding conscious. Are you conscious right now? No, no, if he is responding. Oh, if he's responding, okay. Sir, what's your name? Abdullah. Abdullah, okay. The victim number one is Abdullah. Hey, Abdullah, you're bleeding. What happened to you? Are you okay? How many fingers do I have? One. Can you spell out your first name? Abdullah. Okay? You know where you are? Yes. So the victim is conscious and the victim is oriented. It's very important, guys. Right? The victim is conscious. At the same time, the victim is oriented. Okay, now, Nana, what's your name? Sabina. Sabi? Sabina. Sabina. Okay, the next victim is Sabina. Nana, what happened to you? You're bleeding. And then suddenly she told me, I don't know you. Madam, I'm your co lead. I'm the nurse of the company. Are you okay? I don't know where am I. Who are you? You're bleeding, madam. I need to send you to the hospital. I think you fell down. So the victim is conscious, but the victim is disoriented. What not oriented? Disoriented. Guys, it's normal to a victim that he might suffer from disorientation. Why? 
because after an injury, the victim will go into a shock stage. Remember, injury, after a certain injury, what will happen to the body? Shock stage. In shock stage, anything can happen. See, Ms. Sabina is conscious, but she is disoriented. Why? Maybe because of fear. The blood sugar went down. Oxygen level went down. Okay? Blood pressure went down. So your body is adapting to the new environment. So there are tendencies that the victim might suffer from disorientation. Temporary loss of memory. We call that We call that dementia. It's normal to a victim that he might suffer from dementia because of the changes of the environment inside your body. For example, you suffer from choking. Or let's say traumatic brain injury, you hit your head. Your oxygen level will go down, so dehydration. You're working under the sun. You, you suffer from dehydration. You might suffer from disorientation because of dehydration. But it's only temporary because, because of the shock stage. If you recover from the shock stage, you will remember all the things. Okay? That is usually this thing. In a normal person, this happened to us. You forgot where you placed your keys. Right? Especially every morning. You forgot your wife. You forgot your husband. No, I'm just joking, right? Every morning, you are dehydrated. When you are sleeping, what's happening to you? You are on a hibernation stage. Oxygen goes down. Water goes down. That's why every morning if you wake up, you feel dizzy. Sometimes you think, uh, what are the things that I need to do? You, you try to remember things not easily because you're... Your body is just starting. We call that dementia. It's a temporary loss of memory. Number one cause is dehydration. What more if you suffer from shock stage? Are we good? But it's only temporary. Clear? All right. Now, next. Unconscious victim. When can you say that the victim is unconscious? What is unconscious, guys? Hmm? Unresponsive. Correct. The victim is no response. Is this conscious or unconscious? What's the meaning of unconscious again? Huh? Conscious or unconscious? Unconscious, right? If you are sleeping, are you conscious or unconscious? And why are you here? What's the definition of unconscious? Let's go back. What's the definition of unconscious? Abdullah, if you're sleeping, if I wake you up, you will wake up. So you're responding. So you are conscious when you are sleeping. Correct, madam? If you're sleeping and your colleague snores aloud, you will wake up, right? Hey, man, lower down the tone. I cannot sleep. So you respond. So you are conscious when you are sleeping. Now, let's talk about unconscious unresponsive. Correct? Unconscious. We have two kinds of unconscious. Unconscious breathing. Breathing. Victim is unconscious. Hey, sir, sir, are you okay? Hey, sir, are you okay? Victim is unconscious, guys, but the victim is breathing. So the victim is in a deep sleep. This is, this, what do we call that? 
own house. Or can you see these people? Unresponsive and breathing. You go to Hamad later, you go to the ICU, you can see a lot of them, right? Sleeping and dreaming. We call that unconscious but breathing. Okay? And the other victim is, hey sir, 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 are you okay? Hey sir, are you okay? Unconscious but not breathing. How you will say if the victim is not breathing? No airways and no rising and falling of the chest. Are we good? So unconscious breathing and unconscious not breathing. Clear. Why does the victim is suffering from disorientation? Because the victim is undergoing shock stage. shock stage. Why does the victim is unconscious and breathing? Because the victim is undergoing shock stage. Why does the victim unconscious not breathing? Because the victim is undergoing shock stage. See, there's a lot of things when you are undergoing shock stage. It depends how severe, how, what's the severity of the injury, and it depends on your susceptibility. Clear? You understand? Okay, what are the two kinds of victim again? Unconscious. Under conscious, we have? Okay, you call 999. 999, hello. Okay, this is Abdullah. I have one victim here. The victim is conscious, but he do not know he's hurt. What happened? Uh, he's bleeding a lot. Maybe because of bleeding, that's why he suffered from disorientation. Okay? Sir, I have one victim here. Unconscious but breathing. What should I do? Okay? If the victim is unconscious breathing, do you need to compress the chest? No. If the victim is unconscious not breathing, do we need to apply CPR? Okay. How many compressions per minute? Oh, 30 compression to rescue breath. If you want to apply rescue breath, the standard is one with no rescue breath. 100. Hmm? Compress the chest 100 to 120 compression per minute. No rescue breath. Why? If you don't know the victim, are you willing to this guy beside you? Are you willing to no. do mouth to mouth? No, of course. What if he's suffering from COVID? He's suffering from communicable disease, right? So stick to 100, 200, 100, 120 compression. But if you know the victim, well, it's up to you guys. You're the rescuer. Here? So rescue breath is only an option. If you want to apply rescue breath, it's up to you. But sometimes, if the tongue blocks your airways, no chance. You have to stick with 100 to 120 compression. You understand this too? But we have one more victim. What's the third victim, guys? You took first aid before, right? Who teach, who teach you? What's the third victim? Think of it. Let's have a recap. Conscious. Unconscious. Unconscious, we have breathing. We have not breathing. We have the third victim. If you are unconscious, not breathing, you're dead. RIP is dead, rest in peace. If you answer this one, you go home right now, I'll produce your certificate. Go, I'll give you 10 minutes to, I'll give you 10 minutes to think. You ask who will Go ahead guys, come on. So go. You need to find the third one. Hmm? What's the third one? 
What's the third fifth thing? What do you think is the third fifth thing? The most dangerous one. Comatose is the unconscious breathing. That's the comatose. Subconscious. No? Alright. The third victim is the most fatal one. We call this false breathing. Or adrenal breathing. What is an adrenal breathing? Usually, this happens when you are sleeping. What's a, what is a normal breathing, guys? This is a normal breathing. Right? Adrenal breathing is like this. When you're sleeping, you're going to make a loud sound. <laughs> But you should be unconscious. What's the definition of unconscious again, sir? Unconscious. What's this? Unresponsive. If you are snoring loud at night and I will wake you up and you're not responding to me, you might suffer from false breathing. You might suffer from cardiac arrest. Okay, that's what we call the abnormal breathing pattern. We don't know the reason, but some of the study it's because your pancreas did not work, especially if you eat too much biryani before you go to bed. What will happen to your blood sugar? Spike, right? And during sleeping, you're on a hibernation state. Metabolism goes down, oxygen level goes down, and your blood sugar is too high. So there are tendency that your pancreas will not secrete an insulin, and you die. Okay, one more thing. If a person suffered from heart attack, abdominal breathing is like this. Ah! Then stop. Then ah! Then stop. Then ah! Then stop. Is that the normal breathing? Normal breathing is that's the normal breathing. Okay. Do we need to apply CPR? Yes. Yes. Because the heart is not working. Okay, so if someone snore at night, we have to Hello, hello, wake up, wake up. Maybe you're suffering from false breathing. Clear? Are we good? Okay. No question here. Again, why does the victim become disoriented, unconscious breathing, unconscious false breathing, unconscious not breathing? Because of one reason, shock after injury, after an illness, your body will undergo shock stage. That's all. No more. Okay, if you suffer from accident, you undergo shock stage. If you see your wife and you don't have you don't have money, you undergo Shock stage. Okay. <laughs> All right, are we good? Yes. Okay, now, when we talk about first aid, we have some priorities. Okay, number one, we need to prioritize if the patient is suffering from breathing problems, bleeding. Breaks and burns, right? Let's start with bleeding. How you will suffer from bleeding? How you will suffer from bleeding? We call that wounds, okay? You suffer from wounds. 
How about brakes? Puncture and dislocation. How about burns? There's a lot, right? Fire, chemical, uh, electrical is the worst <laughs> man. Guys, remember, if you're going to rescue a person who is electrocuted, be sure that the power is off. And what else? High temperature, check the soup. You're boiling water, you're boiling soup, automatic third degree, you lose all your skin, but it's not painful because no more skin, how can you feel the pain? All right, it's a third degree burn. Okay, now, in breathing, how you will suffer from breathing? Asthma, okay. What else? Choking. Choking. Etc. Allergy. Anaphylactic reaction, allergy. Well, actually, guys, breathing can go to breathing problems. Burns can go to breathing problems. Breaks. It can go, it can lead, yes, if the fracture is open, you lost a lot of blood. Okay, before you die, you will suffer from breathing problem. You're not going to die immediately, guys. First, you need to make some drama. <laughs> then you're not going to die immediately. All right? There's a little bit drama. We call that before you, before you die. It's impossible. It's it's very impossible that you'll die immediately without suffering from breathing problem, even in the worst accident. Okay? Are we good? So, breathing problem, bleeding problems, breaks, and burns. Here, these are the things that you need to prioritize. Okay? We have one, for example, we have one guest. Let's say not guest, staff, having a difficulty in breathing. The nurse is not around, and you don't know the cause. Or you suffer from fear. <laughs> Hyperventilation. What's your first aid? What's your first aid, guy? You don't know the cause. Why the victim is suffering from difficulty in breathing? What's your first aid? You need something. That one. Here. Are we good? Okay. Are we good? Breathing, bleeding, breaks, and burns. Okay, now, let's go to your first aid kit. What are the things that you can see in your first aid kit? You give me one. Bandages, what else? Bandages only? Burn spray. Burn spray, what else? Or say spray, uh, let's say antiseptic one, alcohol, methadine, what else? Cold compress, what else? Cold compress, what else? It's included in the antiseptic one, right? what else? Scissor, what else? Gloves, we need gloves, what else? Mask, we need mask, what else? Triangular bandage, you, you, you're familiar with the triangular bandage? You know what is a triangular bandage? Yes or no? It's triangular bandage because it's a triangle. You have a triangular bandage in your first aid kit, but it's this whole, it's disposable. Okay, we use this to injury, injury to support the arm. What else? Splint. Sam screen. Some of the first aid kit they have the Sam screen. If you don't have the Sam screen, you can use any wood or cartoon. Okay? We have big, small, and we have for finger. This one is for the leg. What is the name of this one? Sam screen. 
S A M splint. Okay, used to support a broken arm, suspected fracture. In some first aid kit, you have the cervical collar. That's for the advanced first aid. What else? CPR mask. Are you available? Are you aware for the, uh, are you aware of the CPR mask? Yes. This one. You're familiar with the CPR mask? Okay. If you have the CPR mask, you can do rescue breath, but it's not a guarantee that you're safe. Okay, again, it's your call, it's your decision. Okay, you're the rescuer. It's not necessary to apply rescue work. Okay? Are we good? When you have first aid kit, health and safety, number one, you have to maintain the checklist. Checklist, right? Number two, expiration date. Okay? Number three, if you use some items in the first aid kit, you have to what? You have to refill it. Right? Courtesy for the courtesy for the next user, you have to repeat. Sometimes Baladi are checking your first aid kit. Expiry, near expiry, throw away. Okay? Are we good? Any question? Let's have a recap. So prioritization, breathing, bleeding, breaks, and burns. We have two kinds of victim, conscious and conscious. It's very important if you call 999, okay? This is very important, sir. The victim is suffering from breathing problems. The victim is suffering from bleeding. I think suspected fracture. And sir, I have one victim is unconscious and he suffered from severe burns. Clear? Are we good? Okay, now let's go to the first injury. Oh, by the way, guys, I forgot. Are we allowed to apply first aid? Are we allowed to apply first aid? You should know this. What if the nurse is not here? Are you allowed? We need to check with the nurse. Okay. Sabina, right? For example, Miss Sabina is the victim. Madam, I'm the first aider of the hotel. Okay? You badly need the first aid. Can I apply first aid to you? Abdullah, you're the witness that I ask a verbal permission from the man. Okay? If she allows me, I will touch him. Okay, madam, I will just get the first aid kit. Please stay here. Please stay here of the victim. She allows me, right? I have witnessed that the victim allows me to apply first aid to her. But if the victim does not allow you, it's okay, madam, I'm going to call 999. We call, we, we call that express consent from the victim. What if the victim is unconscious? Where are you going to get the clearance to apply first aid? 999, triple nine. Sir, I'm conscious not breathing. The noise is not here. What should I do? Place the mobile on speaker. Do you know how to apply CPR? Yes, sir. How does how how long was the victim is unconscious? I have no idea, sir. Alright, can you check the airways? Breathing. Totally not breathing? Yes, sir, it's not breathing. Do you know how to use the AED? Yes, sir. Get the AED. Connect the AED and start your CPR. Within five minutes, the help is on the way. We call that implied consent. You did not get the consent from the victim, but you get the consent from the third party, which is the paramedic. Remember, guys, if the victim becomes unconscious, not breathing, it means to say that the victim is clinically dead. You only have two choices. Shock stage is either unconscious breathing, you're lucky. But the question is, when are you going to wake up? 10 years from now? 5 years from now? Okay. 
but the, the peace, your breathing. But if you are unconscious, not breathing, you're dead. If we apply CPR to you, it's not a guarantee. 20% only. Here? Are we good? Yes. All right. So let's go to injury. Choking. What are the two types of choking? We have mild, mild and severe obstruction. Mild obstruction means you're drinking water and then <coughs> that's mild. You don't need the help of other people. You can remove it by your own. What if you suffer from full obstruction? No more air, right? No air. The feeling that you are on the other side of the world, pitch black. Okay? Now, what are the things that can cause choke? Give me one. Food. What else? For the kids? Or an object, candies, anything, coins, right? Every Thursday, vomit, you're drunk. And you might suffer from choke. What else? The worst case that will happen to it to you if your tongue choke you. Traumatic brain injury, football, you hit your head, and then your tongue blocks. How can you breathe? No more. Okay, these are the things that can cause choking. Okay, are we good? Okay, guys, focus on here, huh? Choking. What will happen after the injury? What's the next stage? If you suffer from injury, what will happen? Let's say full choking. What will happen to your oxygen level? Very good. What will happen to your carbon dioxide? We inhale oxygen, right? We exhale carbon dioxide. But your airway is blocked, totally blocked. So what will happen to your CO2? It will increase. So your chest will be heavy. Clear? Okay. Uh, who goes to the gym? Raise your hand. Abdullah, if you go to the gym, what's happening to your heart rate? Go fast. Why? Because your body is demanding more oxygen, right? So that's why your heart rate will go up. Now, you're suffering from choking. No air. What will happen to the oxygen level? What will happen to the CO2? And what will happen to your heart rate? Hmm? It will go up. We call this... Compensatory mechanism is the survival mode of the body. How can you breathe? No more air. It's blocked. So where are you going to get air? Your heart will create more air. It will pump. It will pump. It will pump. This is what we call the survival mode of the body. But it's a limited time only. After five minutes, your compensatory mechanism will will collapse. Now, what will happen to your heart rate? Zero. And 
until you become no more particle. How many minutes? That's the question. We follow this in the emergency room. So what time is it? Three. 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 Three zero three. Three zero two. What's your name? Samuel. Samuel suffered from choking at three o two. No air. Three o two. Three o three. Three o four. Three o five. Three o six. Three o seven. Within five minutes, your compensatory mechanism will activate. You can still survive. Remember, we have two kinds of victim. What's the, what's the, what are the two kinds of victim? Conscious and unconscious. Why does the victim become conscious? Why does the victim become disoriented? Because the, the victim is undergoing shock stage. Why? What's happening to the shock stage? Oxygen. When your oxygen is gradually or dramatically losing, you become disoriented and become weak. But again, your body will compensate within five minutes. After five minutes, this will fail. So what will happen to your heart rate? Go down. Right? So 303, 4, 5, 6, 7. What's the condition of Samuel? Samuel is disoriented, weak, powerless. Maybe conscious, maybe semi disoriented. Right? Because why? No more oxygen. Oxygen is gradually going down. You're following, guys? Yes, yes. Right? So, to make it sure, within five minutes, you have to save. You have to save the victim. Now, what's your first aid for choking? I only have five minutes. We still have air. I need to use that air to push the foreign object outside of the mouth. So, sir, follow my instruction. Close your fist. You locate this, the navel. This is the diaphragm on top of the navel. Sir, please bend forward. Bend, bend forward. Now, if you bend forward, you can feel the pressure, right? Okay, now follow my instruction. Give me five cough. One, two, three cough. Cough. <coughs> when he cough, the air will go down, and that's the time to, that you need to push it up. One, cough. <coughs> two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. You have to be fast and accurate. In one minute, you have to do it four to five times. Okay? Thank you, sir. Are we clear? We call, we call that abdominal thrust and or hemorrhage maneuver. Clear? Abdominal, abdominal thrust or hemorrhage maneuver. Here, FNB, listen up. Huh? This is very important. If you have one guest, he suffered from choking and you don't know what to do, the guest will die. Are we good? Okay. Let's... Come here, sir. This is your belly button, right? Close your face. On top of the belly button, this is your diaphragm. Okay, sir, please bend forward. You can feel the pressure. Yes. Right? And then try to cough. When you cough, I will lift it up. Okay? Try this one, guys. Open your mouth, then push. Air is coming out. Okay? That's the principle of hemorrhage maneuver. Here, let's go back here. What time is it again, sir? 3. 3. 301, 302, 303. You save the victim, you remove the choke. 
Now he can breathe, right? But three minutes without air. Do you think three minutes without air is good? No. So what's the condition of the victim? Weak. Powerless. How you will increase the oxygen? Two ways. You give the oxygen or you place the victim in. Shock position. What is shock position? Uh, sir, come here. Let's do the shock position. Please lay down. Down the window. Okay. Or more than this is my house. Like in a chair or something. Like chair. That. Then blood flow will go to the brain. Right. Increase the okay. production of oxygen. Are we clear? Yeah. Because you're having a problem with oxygen. Three minutes without oxygen is not good. Still, the victim is conscious, but the victim is very weak. Clear? Thank you, sir. But if you did not apply first aid, what can happen to the victim after 10 minutes? Two things. It's either the victim is unconscious breathing, comatose, or the victim is unconscious not breathing. If the, if the victim is unconscious not breathing, what's your first aid? Check the airways, check the breathing, get the AED, set up the AED, start your CPR. Are we clear? Any question, guys? The shock stage will not change. The only thing that will change is your injury. What's our injury here? What's your first aid for choking to prevent the shock stage? What's your first aid for choking again? Abdominal thrust. Abdominal thrust, and which maneuver, right? Now, and which? And which maneuver? Okay, now, choking, shock stage. Now, Let's remove the choke. Let's say you're drowning. What will happen after you drown? What will happen after you drown? What do you call the stage? Guys, again, it will not change. Whether you like it or not, your body will undergo shock. Stanley, if you drown, what will happen to you? You drink a lot of water, right? Yes. Within five minutes, what will happen? Yes. If I will not save you, what will happen to you? You're going to die. Finish. Finish. Let's change this one. Bleeding. Why if we suffer from bleeding, we have a difficulty in breathing? Why? Because your blood is the one who carries oxygen, nutrients, nu oxygen, nutrients, water, and electrolytes. That's why if you lost a lot of blood, you have a difficulty in breathing. How many liters of blood do you have? Six. Six liters maximum. If you have ten, you donate the other five. You want, you can measure it later. Are we good? Okay, let's say you suffer from heart attack. After heart attack, what's the next stage? Shock stage. 
you suffer from stroke. What's the next stage? Epileptic attack. What's the next stage? Did it change? So that's how you save life. The shock stage will remain. Okay. Treat the cause of the shock stage. Asthma. You suffering from asthma. Severe asthma. After asthma, what's the next stage? Shock stage. If you have a colleague, he's suffering from asthma. Are we allowed to apply oxygen? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. If you don't have the if you don't have the inhaler, apply the oxygen. Are we clear? Yeah. Okay, I will just tackle asthma, and after asthma, we go for your first break. Okay? Sir, how about seizure? Seizure, last time we have one incident, seizure, or one of our colleagues. When it comes to seizure, we have a lot of contributory factor why a victim is suffering from seizure. We don't know the cause. If you are a patient who's, who has an episode of seizure, you have to be responsible. It's impossible that you don't know that you're suffering from seizure. You know that you're suffering from seizure, you should have your own medication. If you miss your medicine two ways, after seizure you will have a second attack, you suffer from cardiac arrest, you die. After seizure, you're lucky, you will still, you, you're still alive. Worst case, if you suffer from seizure, you hit your head, you suffer from traumatic brain injury, you die. So what's the treatment? Be responsible. If you know that you need a medicine for seizure, you have to take it on time, you have to take it on a daily basis. Do not miss it because Anything your seizure can trigger, stress, workload, dehydration. There's a lot of things that can trigger your seizure, right? So what are you going to do? The victim is seizuring, let him finish the drama. Clear the area. Be sure that he did not hit the head. You get a cushion, you put it on the back of the back of the head at least sometimes you will panic like this do not place anything in the mouth why we have the biting mechanism 200 pounds if you place anything inside the mouth you bite you break the jaw don't worry you will not bite the tongue the tongue will protrude the tongue will move backwards so we will not bite the tongue the worst scenario is if he fell down and he hit his head, that's the worst scenario. So tell him whoever who, whoever that guy is, to take the medication every day. Don't miss it. Yes, some of them. If you go to Hama Diabetes, they will give you the bracelet or the seizure bracelet. At least the people are aware. Oh, this person might suffer from a seizure anyway. So that's why, well, you're, you have a good nurse here. He worked in a hospital before. I know him for a long time. He always asked, did you ah, Did you take your medicine? Yes. So the nurse will trust you. Yes, you take your medicine? Okay. If you don't take your medicine, what happened to you? You seizure, you hit your head, you die. <laughs> as simple as that, guys. Right? So there is nothing during the process. We just need to wait. You restrain the victim, you prolong the seizure. After seizure, you check the airways. You check the breathing. If the victim is not breathing, you get the AED. Boom! Then CPR. If the victim is breathing, tell the victim, stay at ease, recovery position, recover. Breathe. Okay? Are we good? Rest and ask 
that's the way it is. Did you take the medicine? Maybe no. It's impossible. For you. It's impossible that you have the medication and you suffer from seizure. That's very impossible. That's very impossible. So first, either how do we know, like example, there is no bad. How do we know the symptoms? That's, this is seizure. Seizure, you will collapse. Uh, so we will know you that. Can, that only seizure is like this. Mm. And in fact, <laughs> you will never know who, who's, who are those people who has a epileptic seizure. Unless you know the medical history of the Patient, if you if you have been out, if you have been honest to your health and safety, sir, I'm a new employee here. These are my past medical history. I have an episode of seizure before. These are my these are my medication. In case something happens to me, this is the medicine. That's the proper way. Don't pretend, guys. Guys, if you feel something bad, if you feel something not uneasy. Do not pretend that you're okay because sometimes a simple pain is a referred pain. Mm -hmm. Here, if you ill, tell I'm ill today. All right, don't pretend. It might cost your life. Are we good? For the seizure, we don't have a remedy. Send it to the hospital. Take the medication. On the first attack, it's okay. You can manage. Stay calm. Did you take your medicine? No. Where is your medication? It's with me. After the attack, rest, you give the medication. If there's a second attack, you call 999, ready the AED, and ready for CPR. Clear? Okay, any question, guys? It can happen spontaneously. After the first attack, the victim will become semi-unconscious, and after five to ten minutes, second attack. Uh, it depends how long does he did not take the medication, because it's a maintenance. Okay, it might something triggers that seizure, and he did not take the medication. And that's the bottom line. You did not take the medication. So this medication depends on the person. No, we only have one medication. It depends on the milligram. Okay? Alright? So that's not the responsibility of the company. It's your responsibility. You know that you're suffering from epileptic attack. You should be responsible for your safety. You have the medicine, right? Okay. Clear? Yeah. All right, so let's take our first 15 minute break. Before we go on break, any question, guys? The lecture is clear? Yes. Okay, take your first break. Bata pa ba yun ang seizure, sir? Oo, oh, bata pa. Ha? 